Welcome. Today we're going to chat to um, two of the key people at Electric SQL. Uh, do I pronounce it Electric SQL or Electric SQL? That's, I guess, the first key question. <laughs> you can pronounce it either way. Yeah. Okay. We're not dogmatic. How do you pronounce it? I say SQL, Electric SQL. Yeah. I say Electric Not SQL. You see uh, already listeners between the founders. There you go. <laughs> okay, and um, maybe just for a little bit of background, you can introduce yourselves quickly and then also let us know what you do at the company. I'm James. Uh, I'm CEO and founder at Electric. I'm a generalist software engineer, really. I've done lots of different types of kind of application building, and then I've done a bunch of kind of startup stuff. Hi, I'm Walter. I'm CTO and co-founder of Electric SQL. Uh, I have a large background in research in academia. I've done more of 13 years in research on CRDTs. And then I moved away from academia into industry. I work in small startups and enterprise alike. Nice. I guess as well, another rapid fire question. What type of dog do you have? I was Big wondering dog. whether that came through. Yeah, that was my end, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that was your That's, end, was it? Yeah, okay. yeah. That's Frankie. He's a he's a black shepherd, so he's half Croatian sheepdog, half German shepherd, uh, and he's lively. Cool. Yeah. Let me ask you a couple of rapid fire. Which IDE do you use for programming? VS Code. When I program. Old school. No IDE. Text editor. Sublime text. Favorite programming lang language? Definitely Elixir. <laughs> mm, that's a tough one. I've been enjoying TypeScript a lot now. It's very fun, very quick to, to use, very easy to read. Let's talk about the integration that you built. I believe you're releasing it just this month and it gives some very cool capabilities. So what is the integration and how does it help Superbase developers? Yeah, it's, it's super exciting, right? So basically we've integrated things. Electric SQL with Superbase. And so what that means is you have Superbase for managed Postgres hosting. You then run the Electric Sync service in front of your Superbase database. And then you can select tables in your data model to opt them into local first sync. You can then uh, use the sync service to get data into local applications and then build applications on this local first pattern. We've had a lot of people in our community asking for Superbase integration. We had to do a bunch of engineering to slightly change the way we did things to be compatible with sensible permissions that the hosted service has as a default. We're now up in the marketplace. Uh, you can follow the instructions. And we've done a nice demo, which is basically showcasing some of the other capabilities in the Superbase suite. And so the, the demo that we built, we basically kind of set up to showcase some of that. So the first thing is that you log in with Superbase Auth. Superbase Auth gives you a JSON web token. And then we've set up the Electric SQL Auth system to just be able to reuse the same token. And then we built like a kind of local first checkout experience. So one of the cool things about having like zero latency for like an e-commerce checkout experience, you don't have drop off, right? Because it's famous that every hundred milliseconds costs however many millions for drop off if you're running retail at Amazon scale. So it's a sort of showcase of like a, a local first checkout experience. But then when you come to actually place the order, that's exactly the kind of thing where you would want to say, do a secure payment and typically use like a backend function to do that. And so there's a few different patterns of doing that. And the best way of doing it is to sort of emulate request response over the replication protocol. So what we've done is write a row into the database locally. When that syncs, when you're online into the server, that triggers a super base edge function. The edge function, function triggers the payment, handles any fulfillment, updates the record in the database, that syncs back to the client and shows the, the user that the order is confirmed. So what we do as Electric is we provide this sync layer that kind of handles that distributed systems complexity and the concurrency challenges. And I wanted to highlight some of the complexity for our audience. I guess let's get into CRDTs. Maybe we can delve a little deeper. Yeah, so the CRDTs stand for conflict-free replicated data types. And there are basically two definitions of CRDTs. These were proposed around 2011 by three researchers. Uh, Nudo Preguisa, which was my advisor and with whom I've done work for the past 13 years. Carlos Baquer, which is another investigator in Portugal. And Mark Shapiro, which is a professor in Paris and Sorbonne University that before did exotic things like inventing the proxy, which is probably one of the most widely used uh, things in the world. And he was also a lead in a distributed research lab in Cambridge. 
So these three people were looking into this problem of how to build systems and databases that will be convergent so that it could be updated synchronously and they invented the C CRDTs. And the two definitions that they proposed was one that is called state-based CRDTs and the other is called operation-based CRDTs. Uh, state-based CRDTs are basically an object, a data type that has a merge operation and this merge operation needs to have three properties. They must be, uh, the merge operation must be either dependent, associative and commutative. So at any point you can take the state of two objects and combine them together, taking the changes that were produced in each of the objects. To give a simple example, imagine a counter and you have two users modifying this counter without synchronizing with each other because they were offline. So in one side you incremented the counter two times, in the other side you incremented three times. After these data types merge, then you get to value five because the intention of each user was to increment the counter in an amount of times and you want to sum those values. The other kind of CRDTs is operation-based CRDTs. And operation-based CRDTs are more efficient in many cases than state-based CRDTs because instead of propagating the entire state of an object, they propagate only the updates or the effects of those updates in, in truth. And the requirements that you need for these operations are less strict than the merge operation. So the operations only need to be commutative, but this requires more guarantees of the broadcast mechanism that is sending those operations. So the operations need to be sent in under causal order so that you make sure that the operations are delivered according to happens before rule and that you don't have duplicates. How many researchers do you have in the company? Mm -hmm. So we have five of the top researchers in the field of CRDTs and uh, distributed systems in a team. We already mentioned Nudman Mark, the inventors of CRDTs, and Ned Pionusa, that was a lead researcher on Antidote TB. And in the core team, we have me and Kevin. So I did a lot of research on improving the consistency of eventual consistent databases, and Kevin that focused on the verification of CRDT data types. Are you uh, mostly open source? Are you closed source? Uh, how do you operate your tech? Everything's open source. Uh, it's Apache 2 license, so permissive to open source. And it's designed particularly for self-host. So like we don't operate a managed service. We're sort of packaged for you to run on the infrastructure of your choice. Given the nature of your work, I think it's probably super interesting for a lot of developers. How could some open source developers get involved? Yeah, so we've got a Discord community and... Um, there's a bunch of kind of work that's sort of ongoing in progress there. And if you're interested in getting involved in potentially helping develop or test or kind of any, any aspect of the project, um, that's a great place to sort of say hello and kind of find out kind of what's currently being worked on. Okay, last question, because I've asked everyone this week and you've got to think of the answers separately in your brain. Don't influence each other. So would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Volta. I would rather fight 100 horse-sized ducks. Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst of all worlds. <laughs> no, no, let me start. Horse-sized ducks. Exactly. Horse-sized. No, no, no. <laughs> Duck-sized horses, 100 duck-sized duck horses. <laughs> duck -sized. I, think you, I think you should be on record there for fighting, for fighting the monster. Uh, 100 duck-sized horses. What about you, James? Yeah, I'd go with the duck-sized horses, but I think I might just try and run away in either case. Yeah. You choose peace. And actually, I asked Yoko this. You get one tongue to fight them with. What do you choose? Do I have to fight them or can I use it to get away? You've got to fight them. There's no running away from these fast ducks. I'm, go I'm going to go with a flamethrower, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, well, not a bad choice. What uh, about you, Volta? How do you say the sweeper, right? Uh, when, sweeper. Not the mop, the one for dust. How do you say it in English? Uh, yeah, like a, a broom. Or, a broom. Um, yeah. I will use a broom. I think they will be afraid of the sound and I could shovel a lot of them at once. <laughs> I mentioned that they are vet quite small. Maybe they are, I mentioned them smaller than ducks, actually. <laughs> so we've got flame flowers and brooms. One seems more effective than the other, I have to say. But uh, it's interesting where the mind goes. That's great.